Hello everyone, it's Rymok1 here, aka Rydor the Banisher, and in this video I will be going over Werewolf in the Elder Scrolls Online. How to unlock and level the skill line, how to feed and buy other players, and some gear and foods that help reduce the ultimate cost. So, let's get it. There are three ways to become a werewolf in the Elder Scrolls Online. Buy the skill line with crowns, get bit by a rare NPC in either Reaper's March the Rift or Bankerai, or the easiest path, have another player bite you at the Werewolf Shrine. So I'm at the shrine here in Reaper's March, and my wife Ritzy is back to turn me into a werewolf. Once bitten, a quest will appear on the shrine, so grab this to be able to start to unlock the werewolf skill line. Once you have completed the starter quest, Hercene will grant you with his blessing, and you will unlock the werewolf skill line. From here, you can push K for skills, and then go down to world, and here you will see the werewolf skill line. From here, you will slot the werewolf ultimate and start leveling up the skill line. After you have used the werewolf ultimate to transform, your bar will change to a werewolf bar. From here, you can only slot werewolf skills and you cannot bar swap until the transformation has ended. Whenever there is a corpse to consume and you are in werewolf form, a synergy will prompt you to use Devour. By default on PC, X is the synergy key. You can rebind this to whatever key you choose, but devouring a corpse will heal you and extend your transformation. So just kill, devour, and repeat. Unlike Vampire, the Werewolf skill line can only be leveled up by slaying enemies while you are in Werewolf form. This means for the first level, you will have to either light or heavy attack to kill your enemies until your first Werewolf skill is unlocked. Always remember to devour your corpses to stay in Werewolf form longer. The skill line goes to level 10. And once you get some of the skills unlocked, it goes pretty fast. You can farm Dolmens, Skyreach, wherever you want. Just farm where there are plenty of enemies so that you can kill and devour over and over. The ultimate is Werewolf Transformation. Transform into a werewolf, fearing nearby enemies. While transformed, your maximum stamina is increased by 30%. While the ultimate is slotted, your stamina recovery is increased by 15%. The first morph of the ultimate is Pack Leader. You take 10% less damage and summon two dire wolves to fight by your side. You also grant yourself and nearby group members minor courage. The second morph is Werewolf Berserker. While transformed, your light attacks apply X amount of bleed damage over a 4 second period, and your heavy attacks deal 50% splash damage as a conal attack to nearby enemies. The first werewolf ability is Pounce. Pounce on an enemy, dealing X bleed damage. Activating the ability again within 5 seconds can cause carnage, which causes enemies to bleed an additional X damage over 10 seconds, and deals up to 450% more damage to enemies under 100% health. The first morph of Pounce is Brutal Pounce. This increases the damage of carnage, and increases your damage by 85 for each enemy hit, up to a total of 510 weapon and spell damage increase. The second morph is Feral Pounce. Dealing damage with either attack restores 85 stamina and extends your werewolf transformation by one second. The next ability we have is Hercene's Bounty. This ability heals you for X health and if you are at 100% health you restore 3000 stamina instead. While slotted, this ability grants major brutality and major sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20%. The first morph is Hercene's Rage. This reduces the cost and you gain Major Berserk, but you also take 8% more damage. The second morph is Hercene's Fortitude. This choice increases the healing done and grants you minor endurance and minor fortitude, increasing your health and stamina recovery by 15% for 20 seconds. The next ability is Roar. Fears up to 6 enemies, stunning them and setting them off balance. While slotted, you gain Major Savagery and Major Prophecy. The first morph is Ferocious Roar. 
This increases your heavy attack speed by 33% for 7 seconds after casting the ability. The second morph is Deafening Roar. This roar applies major breach and minor maim to your enemies, reducing their resistances and their damage done for 7 seconds. Next we have Piercing Howl. Crush your enemies dealing X physical damage, and enemies who face you take 10% more damage from this attack. The first morph is Howl of Despair. This grants a synergy to you or your allies, giving them in power and minor force. The second morph choice is Howl of Agony. Increases the damage of feared and facing enemies by 22% from this attack. The last ability is Infectious Claws. Deals X disease damage and an additional X disease damage over 20 seconds, and it also applies the disease status effect. The first morph is Claws of Anguish. Inflicts enemies with major defile for 2 seconds, which reduces their healing and recovery by 16%. The second morph choice is Claws of Life. This morph heals you for 64% of the damage caused over the 20 second duration. The first passive is Devour. While in werewolf form, this allows you to devour corpses to extend your transformation for up to 12 seconds and restores 8% of your max health. Next is Pursuit. While in werewolf form, your movement speed is increased by 30% and your heavy attacks restore 50% more stamina. Next up is the Blood Rage passive. While in werewolf form, when dealing damage, your transformation is increased by 4 seconds. This can occur every 5 seconds. Next up we have Savage Strength. While in werewolf form, Increase your weapon and spell damage by 18% and it also grants you major resolve. Next is Blood Moon. This passive allows you to bite and infect another player with lycanthropy every 7 days if you choose to do so, aka turning them into a werewolf. The last passive is Call of the Pack. While in werewolf form, reduce the cost of remaining in werewolf form by 20% for each transformed werewolf or direwolf in your group up to a maximum of 80%. You may have noticed that there are different colored werewolves that you have seen throughout the battlefield, whether in PvP or your friends, etc. And that depends on the ultimate morph that you have chosen. The base morph is always going to be a gray werewolf. And if you choose the pack leader morph, your werewolf will be the color white. If you choose the werewolf berserker morph, this will change your werewolf to a black color with white paws. So knowing this, you can understand what morph your opponent has chosen when you're in PvP based on the werewolf's colors. There are three werewolf shrines that you can go to and bite other players or be bitten to turn into a werewolf. One of them is in the zone Bankerai, shown here on your map. The next shrine, and in my opinion the easiest one to get to, is in the zone of Reaper's March, shown here on your map. You've probably ran past this shrine every time you go to do the wood survey that's just literally right next to it. The third shrine you can go to is in the zone of the rift and is shown here on your map. Again, you might have ran past this shrine on your way to get the jewelry survey that's nearby. A gold food that is designed for werewolf is pack leader's bone broth. This food increases your max stamina and health and reduces the ultimate cost for Werewolf. The base cost of the ultimate is 325 ultimate, and 300 ultimate for both morphs. But if you eat this food, it will reduce your ultimate cost by 16 for the base ultimate, and 15 for both morphs. There are many sets in the game that also do this as well, and you can stack them to reduce the cost further if you choose to do so. This recipe drops during the Witches Festival, or you can buy it or the foods off of the Guild Traders. A set that pairs well with Werewolf and the Pack Leader's Bone Broth food is the Salvation set. This set is an Overland set that drops in the zone of Malabal Tor, and the fifth piece bonus reduces the cost of your Werewolf Ultimate by 33%, and while in Werewolf form, your weapon and spell damage is increased by X. If you gold this set out, it will not increase the 33% reduction, 
but it will raise the weapon and spell damage up to 150, as well as the 2, 3, and 4 piece buffs. Another set that was designed to reduce Werewolf Ultimate cost is the Shapeshifter's Chain Mythic. This mythic reduces the cost of your transformation and your werewolf abilities by 15%, and it increases your tri stats by 1707 while you are in werewolf form. If you go to the crown store and then click on upgrades and then skill lines, here you will find the cure and werewolf skill line that you can purchase with crowns. All of these actions can be done in the game for free, so just save your crowns. There are plenty of guilds and people that will bite you for free if you're wanting to become a werewolf. If you ever want to cure and get rid of your werewolf or vampire disease, there is a Priest of Arche at every Rededication Shrine. Every capital city and every expansion city has one of these shrines. I'm at the Wayrest Shrine in Stormhaven for this example. All you need to do is talk to the NPC Prelate Sabinus if you choose to get cured. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I hope it helped you to understand more about Werewolf in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you learned anything, please hit that subscribe button, and I thank you so much for watching. This is Rydor, out. Sango! Haru! Good girl.